Okay, we're going to use the Bending Light applet to run some virtual labs. To get to that applet, you just need to go to the Resources section of Blackboard and Applets and then Bending Light applet. Um, you'll need Java installed on your computer to run this. So you'll come up with this screen right here. And we're going to go to the More Tools tab up here at the top left. And what you'll see is a laser here, the method of viewing the laser. So I'm going to turn the laser on, just pressing a little button on it, we can turn the laser on. We have the option, if we move the cursor out here, of moving the laser up and down, rotating it. We can change the color of the laser. and we can change it from a ray which is just a straight line laser looking light to a wave and this would show you you know this shows you basically the wave nature of light but really we're going to keep it on ray for most of what we're doing here now notice that when you have the laser shining directly down into the material there's no bending the beam just travels straight through the material. So this is one extreme for reflection and refraction. Another extreme is as you bring the laser down, rotate it down, you notice that there's some reflection here and there's some refraction going on here. And as you bring it down more, the amount of reflection increases and the amount of refraction decreases. And so at some point when you get to the point where the laser is parallel to the interface between air and glass in this case, the beam is just straight and there's no reflection anymore and there's no refraction either. So these are the extremes. Um, when you're measuring this, by the way, the angles here, the best way to do it is with this angle set to about 45 degrees. I'll show you that in a minute. We can change the materials from air to water to glass to some mystery items. If I was to change the material to glass, the expectation is that the beam is traveling through the same material. There's no interface of one material with another, so it should just travel in a straight line. And sure enough, it does. So you can explore this to see what effects different materials have on light and even explore the idea that look if you don't have the difference in materials the beam just continues to go straight and of course that seems um, self-evident but it's nice to see that work in in the simulation when we go to measure the index of refraction for materials with this particular tool here you're going to want to go to the toolbox here and if you just hold down the cursor while you're on for instance the protractor you can bring the protractor over here and the proper way to set up the protractor is to make sure that the normal passes through zero down here zero degrees because we're measuring this angle between zero degrees and the laser beam itself and for the incident angle which is the angle of the beam coming in to the interface between the glass and the air in this case we're going to set that to 45 degrees so right there is 45 degrees each major division here is 10 degrees so 30 45 so we have the beam coming in at 45 degrees and when we go to measure the angle of refraction remember it's always measured between the beam and the normal which is this straight line that's 90 degrees to the surface here we come down here and measure oh, it looks like we're measuring uh, 10 20 uh, 25 26 27 28 about 28 degrees so using this tool I, I might ask you to measure in fact I will ask you to measure the index of refraction for a material so you're going to have to use Snell's law to measure this angle and then measure the angle down here 
and using Snell's law you should be able to come up with an index of refraction for a material. Okay, another thing you can do that's interesting with this kit is measure the speed of light in a material. So if I go here and use this little speed tool and bring it right, the pointer right down on the beam, it'll show that the speed of this beam is 1 times c, c being the speed of light. So it's the speed of light would be 1c. If I bring it down here, the speed of light is 0.67c. So that means it's 0.67 times the speed of light, or 67% of the speed of light. So that's how you make sense of this particular tool here. And we expect the speed of light to be less in a material. It can't be faster than the speed of light. So one rule of thumb is that if you come up with a number for an index of refraction that's less than 1, then that means you've probably made a mistake. Indexes of refraction have to be greater than 1 because the speed of light divided by the speed of light is the best case scenario and that's 1, 1 over 1. If the speed of light in the material is less than the speed of light as it's going to be, then you'll always have a number greater than 1 for um, the index of refraction. This tool allows us to measure the intensity of the beam and this comes in handy because we know that the intensity of the beam coming out of the laser should be 100% and it is. Measure it down here, it's a little bit less, it's 90%, 90.85%. Some of the beam is being refracted and some of it's being reflected. So the reflected part is 9.15% where the intensity of the refracted is 90.85%. Now let's take a look and make some predictions here. If we shine the beam directly into the material, what do we expect the beam intensity to be? both outside the material and inside the material. Outside it's obviously 100%. Inside the material it's 96.1%, which means that some of the beam is being reflected straight up. And you can see that right before, if I, if I take this a little bit off center, you can see some of the beam is reflected straight up. So materials obviously reflect light. We've all seen the effect of light going into a window, not all of it goes through the window. Some of it's reflected and that's why we can see reflections off windows. So that's happening here. If I take the beam and go at some angle like 45 degrees, I still have 100% out here and I have 92% here. And the trend is that more and more the beam is reflected instead of refracted. So if I come down here, I notice that it's 43% of full intensity here and 56 percent here so more of its being reflected than refracted and as I come down here more I find out that the intensity in the material keeps going down more and more as this angle becomes bigger and approaches 90 degrees and so now we got 80 percent and you have probably noticed that effect anyway if you look at a window and you look at it at an angle it seems to be more reflective when you look at it at an angle and you have uh, less ability to see into the glass to see what's on the other side. So you've probably noticed these effects, it's just that you never really thought that uh, thought anything about them. To flip-flop the interface here, we can change this material up here to glass, and we already did that and showed that the beam, if it's all glass, the beam's going to continue to travel in a straight line. But let's go to air down here. So now the beam is going from glass to air. So imagine the laser is inside a piece of glass and it's shining at a point where uh, we have an interface between the glass and air down here. Interesting thing that happens when you do this is that we have an effect called total internal reflection that occurs and this is responsible for the way f fiber optics work because right now if you notice all of the beam is being reflected in this glass because remember this is glass up here and air down here and if I keep if I change this angle it doesn't matter what I do with this angle down here the beam is totally refracted 
um, if we take our little intensity tool and come out here we notice that it's a hundred percent here and well we can't see it it's a hundred percent here now at some point as I raise the beam up though some of the beam gets through finally gets through the material so now we have it breaking out of the material at a critical angle and we're getting an intensity of 72 percent outside and 27 percent inside but notice before that happened there's just a tiny amount of angle change here that causes this effect where the beam starts to break out low intensity on the outside and high intensity on the inside still and of course when we get to 90 degrees we have the same thing happen that happened before most of the beam leaves the material so this total internal reflection is a really important feature of materials it allows a fiber optic cable to carry a light beam from one end to the other even if the material is bent so I want you to play with this I'm going to give you some specific tasks to do with this tool and we're going to use this to study light in a little bit more detail.